job, Washington cheerleaders. Welcome to this Halloween edition of Football Friday on a Thursday where the scariest thing prep teams face across South Dakota is the end of their seasons in the playoffs. And if you can't tell, neither of us are no. dressed as Mark Oven. No. He's Zach Borg. I'm Brandon Green, but we are holding down the fort as Mark O is out. We had 13 games tonight, and as it's been all season long, tonight is brought to you by Frisbee's Plumbing and Heating. We started things early this afternoon with an 11 AAA doubleheader at Howard Wood Field. Roosevelt, the top seed in the field after going 8-1. and one. They open things up with Watertown in that early game. Watertown deep in Roosevelt territory on their opening possession when Tucker Large makes a large play. He picks it off now. Through the magic of TV, I'm going to speed this thing up because he takes it all the way. The only problem, oh, I thought he was running a penalty. that penalty. A penalty keeps it from being a touchdown. So they get the ball to 33. Not a problem for Brady Dannenbring, though. 33 yards to Michael Paulson. It's 7 to nothing. Later Money. in the quarter, uh, you talked about these guys last night. Dannenbring to Tyler Feldkamp. They might be the best connection in South Dakota. And this is part of it. Why? Look at the move from Feldkamp right there. 17 yards. It's 21 nothing after one. In the second quarter, Kim Nelson's team showing you they have more ways than one to beat you. This time it's on the run. Tyree Nave from the darkness into the light. <laughs> 45 yards. Uh, it was 49 to 14. It wasn't even really that close. Roosevelt rolls. Now the second game would be a shocker. Crosstown showdown between 8-1 and one Lincoln and Washington. Warriors leading 14-6 at half. The defense is taking over in the second half. Freddie Frederick, remember this name, throwing Hunter Merkley for a loss. That was a good opportunity for them to score, but they can't get anything on the board, and the Patriot drive stalls. Lincoln's defense, though, just as good. Max Thompson has nowhere to go, and he's sacked by Jonathan Smith and Jacob Randall. We go to the fourth. Washington thinking upset up 14-6. Less than four minutes to go. Lincoln starter Tommy Thompson had to leave with a concussion. Their backup junior Ty Schaefer in, leading a drive down the field. Great catch there by Wyatt Vandentop on a third and nine. First down inside the 20. Moments later, again, they're going for the tie. Frederick picks him off. And not only does he pick him off, he is going to go wow. 94 yards for the touchdown. I mean, it's black and orange on Halloween. How fitting is it? The biggest upset, at least, that we've got on the show so far, Washington stuns the second seed 21-6. to Yeah, you could call that a treat, but there's no trick here. The next two playoff games are rematches from last week as we had the defending champion Brandon Valley hosting Rapid City Stevens. And you talk about a good connection. This has mm. been one all season. Scolding to Hilton, yes, that's seven points right there for the Lynx. Rapid City Stevens, first play from scrimmage, is actually going to be an interception that's tipped in right nice. into the hands of Jake Crocky. Comes up with it, and he's going to run it all the way back. Cut it across field for the touchdown. Now, get this. Rapid City Stevens would actually score on the ensuing kickoff, but is there anybody in the 605 that runs harder than Tate Johnson? He's going to no. drag defenders oh. with him into the end zone in the links. They would actually go on to win this game in blowout fashion, 52-21. to 21. And then the other matchup from last Thursday is O'Gorman versus Harrisburg. O'Gorman won that game easily 37 to 15. And it's Harrisburg with a 6-0 lead in O'Gorman. They're going for it on fourth down, but nice Lincoln Bodle drags down the runner and Harrisburg takes over. The Tigers are driving and Anders Clayton is stripped by John Kunkel. O'Gorman recovers and the Knights, they march down the field in the final seconds of the half. That's Tate Wishard as he gets it and he's going to get into the end zone for the touchdown. Just Beautifully sticks it out right there. Exactly. Schlimgen. O'Gorman is leading 7-6. to six. Then in the third quarter, it's Schlimgen airing it out to the corner of the end zone, and that's Tip Riemann. He makes a phenomenal – that's going to be plays of the yeah. week worthy. Well, well, you know, you might want to hold off on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, because then we had a 96-yard play. That is Zach Norton as he passes it off to Connor. Pavelko and he breaks through and this would actually be the final score for O'Gorman. They scored 24 points. The thing about it is Harrisburg wasn't able to match it as OG goes on to win 24 to 20. So here's a look at the final four semifinals for next Friday. O'Gorman at Roosevelt all times obviously to be determined. We're going to assume about at 7 o'clock. That'll be at Howard Wood Field. And again the stunner Brandon Valley they get to be home because Washington pulls that upset so it'll be Quite the Final Four. That's actually a rematch of last year's 11 AAA title game. 11 AAA has really just been crazy yeah, this year. You never know who has the upper edge. Stay to form this tonight. In 11 AA, Mitchell making the trek out to Sturgis in the first quarter. We pick things up. First and goal from the one for Mitchell. Nick Robinson fights his way into the end zone for a touchdown as the Colonels tie things up at seven apiece after the extra point. Jumping ahead now to the second quarter. Zach Schoen hands off to Josh Fowler. He'll take it in from three yards. And the scoopers 
retake the lead at this point, 14-7. Then on Mitchell's next drive, Austin Kerr under pressure. He'll fumble, and it's scooped up by Sandon Graham. Graham takes it all the way back for a touchdown as Sturgis leads 20-7. to The Colonels were not done yet, and they fight back. Robinson will answer on his next drive with his second touchdown of the night. And Mitchell comes back to get the win by a final of 35-28. Their reward is peer, and that is not a misprint. Might be time for a mercy rule in the upper levels of high school football here. 103, 103 points. 103 to nothing. Yeah, that... Uh, Wow, Pier is just unstoppable. On the other half of the bracket, Brookings and Huron both win. Those two will meet next week in Brookings in the semifinals. And in 11A, the only unbeaten team is Del Rapids at 9-0, and, and they begin their championship quest against West Central, where in the first, court, first quarter, Couriers, Couriers, excuse me, Austin Henry floats one to Logan Ellingson, who breaks a tackle, and he's going to give us our first score oh. of the day. They would actually miss the extra point, and they lead 6-0. End of the first that Trojans. Oh, yeah. Tr Justin Zerpel keeps it himself and blasts through the line. The Trojans grab the lead 7-6. to six. Then two minutes left in the second, it's deja vu. Zerpel again, he leaps in for the touchdown, and the Trojans lead 13-6. to six. But the Couriers, they would have, they would run the two-minute drill to perfection, and it ends with Logan Stone breaking a tackle. He gets it to the end zone, tied 13-13 at halftime, and it would be that score until the final seconds Derek Agnes is able to kick a game-winning field goal and we have an upset wow. as West Central beats Del Rapids 16 to 13. Their first loss of the year the worst time to do it. Now Del Rapids defeated T by one last week to secure that top seed. Titans welcoming Tri-Valley tonight on their first play. Austin Lake calling his own number and uh, he called the right number. 59 yards for the big gainer deep into Mustang territory. A little bit later in the drive, Garrett Kolbeck will kind of do his dirty work for him here as he punches it in for the touchdown. The Titans were off and running. They look very much like the defending state champs they are. Still in the first quarter, here comes Joey Hedrick in from a few yards out as they roll over Tri-Valley 49-6. And this is probably going to be our best game of the night as we head to Canton as they're taking on. Yeah, we thought it might be as they're taking on Dakota Valley. And Canton, they give it to Shaden Scheidt. And he goes to the right and cuts it all the way back across field. He gets tripped up, keeps his balance. It looks like he didn't step out in 60 yards for the senior fullback. And now we go into the second quarter. And we know what Caden Verley can do. Oh, he man. almost had 400 yards of offense just a couple of weeks ago. And he makes it 21 to 0. And then Canton, they get another turnover. And if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Just give it to Verley. And he's going to get you into the end zone again. He is gone. Getting into the end zone as they go on to win this one 50 to 6. And rounding out the 11A field, Lennox got off to a hot start late in the season with three straight wins, including a four point victory two weeks ago at Madison. Rematch tonight in the Orioles' nest. Brandon Fodness hauls it in and holds on after the big hit. Lennox leading this one 19 to 7. Next Madison drive, Tyler Tappy finds Carter Bergheim. He will go in untouched, and it's back to a one score game. These two are going back and forth all night long on the next Madison. Watch this play though, Lennox, they botch the snap, throw it back across the field to Caleb Metcalf. He cuts all the way back across the field. There's a lot of running going oh, on, man. just making me tired. Down the sideline, he's in for the touchdown, or he would have been if it didn't get called back for an illegal block. Come on. Just before halftime though, Madison looking to score. Fodsness will come up with a big interception, and all these plays mattered in the end big time because Lennox Look at that nice one-handed interception there. Lennox gets the win 35-33, so the semifinals set in 11A. And because of that big Del Rapids upset, Lennox hosts West Central, while Canton will head to T. And as we get into 11B, Mount Vernon Plankinton making the long trip to face Webster, and things start off in the first quarter. Short touchdown by MVP running back Jesse Hastings. And that would be a long drive for MVP, and they gave up the 14-7 lead. Then in the second quarter, Hastings again for the long run, but that's a fumble recovered by Webster. In that drive, the Bearcats move down the field, and Braden Holland, he throws it deep to Colby Terrence, and that ultimately led to a Bearcats touchdown as Webster goes on to win 29-22. In the other quarterfinals, winner over St. Thomas Moore. They will host Webster next week. Bridgewater Emory Ethan shuts out Sioux Valley. McCook Central Montrose on the road defeats Mulbridge Pollock. 
On to the nine-man playoffs, where Coleman Egan looks destined for the 9B state championship, but could a high-flying opponent shoot the Hawks down? We sent Cooper Seamer to find out. Zach, Irene, Wakanda put up 60 points to upset Corsica Stickney on the roll last week, and the Eagles will look to have to keep scoring that pace to upset the Hawks and this bird fight. But it looks like it's going to be cold and even getting the ball first here, and Eli Bowen's going to get the handoff, find a hole, and he's just going to walk into the end zone. Coleman Egan's going to go up quick, just in the first minute there, six and nothing. They'd get the ball back after Irene Wakanda fumble, and it's going to be Nate Tolley this time, and he's going to walk in for the score. The Hawks are up quick, 14 0, with only two minutes gone by so far in the game. And they'd get the ball back, and this time it's going to be a screen pass out to Chase Hemmer, and he's going to get the ball. He's going to make one miss, he's going to make another miss, he's going to spin through another one, and another one, and another one, and he'll fall in. That's going to go through all the defenders, 22 0 at this point. We're still in the first quarter. It'd be 28 0. It's not even done yet. And another touchdown scored. This time it's Bowen again. And it'll be 36 0 after one. And that would be it. Coleman Egan advances 52 to nothing. We'd move a few miles north, another home game for the Del Rapids St. Mary's Cardinals. And they'd go up against Harriet Selby area. And St. Mary would get the ball first. And they'd drive the field as Connor Libis is going to call his own number. And the Cardinals strike first, 8 to nothing. They'd get the ball back, but they'd have to get a fourth and second to keep the drive going. Libis is going to go for the sweep, but he's brought down in the back by Clayton Randall. That's a turnover and downs in Del Rapids, St. Mary area. And let's see if Webster, excuse me, Harry and Selby can keep it going. They get the ball, and it would be Wade Begeman. He's going to fall in for the touchdown, but still they'd miss the extra point, and it would be eight to six. The Cardinals would spawn right away in the second quarter, however, as Libis finds Weston Garrett's for the score. They lead 6-6, but it's Harry and Selby area with the upset, winning 48-38 over the Cardinals. And in the other quarter final, it's Harding County. Thanks, by the way, Cooper over Kadoka area. So those two will play out in Harding next week in the semifinals. There's your Coleman score. They will host Woolsey Wessington. That will be something else in Coleman next week. On to 9AA after stunning Hanson last week. Platt Geddes looking to pull another upset at unbeaten top-ranked Viberg Hurley. Uh, well, good luck with that. The sweep to Angel Johnson. He gets to the corner and breaks free on a 47-yard touchdown run as the home team takes a 6-0 lead. Chase Mason's also pretty good for this team. Pump fake, throwing it up deep, 33 yards. That's a touchdown to Carter Gust. And that makes it 14 and nothing. Platt Geddes had a nice upset last week. Kelby Vanderwerf spinning out of a sack and throws deep to Nate Whalen for the touchdown, but they didn't have nearly enough tonight to beat Platt Geddes, or to beat Viberg Hurley, excuse me, Viberg Hurley 58 to 20. Lemon McIntosh upsetting Hamlin. They will head to Viberg Hurley next week. Bonham big over Jones County White River and Duel defeats Baltic, so those two will play in the semifinals next week. Also in 9A, Britton Hecla over Burke. They will get Gregory, won a good game with Howard. That semifinal out in Britain. And on the other half of the bracket, Sully Buttes edges Warner while Canasota Freeman beats Wall. So Canasota Freeman has to Sully Buttes. Those two were one and two most of the year in the polls. So that should be a pretty good semifinal. I think we had a pretty good show with oh, yeah. Mark. Good work. <laughs> well, a few more sports coming up after the break. <laughs> 